Over the past few nights, we've been reporting on allegations of physical abuse inside the Church of Scientology. The allegations have been made by a number of former high-ranking Scientologists against the Church's leader, David Miscavige, himself. But even some of those who make the allegations also admit they were involved in violent acts. Now, the Church says they were the only ones involved in the violence, the accusers. And dozens of affidavits, current and former senior members of the Church, say the allegations against David Miscavige are all lies. The Church says the accusers are bitter and are working together to try to destroy the Church. The accusers, some of whom still consider themselves Scientologists, say they don't want to destroy the church, just change the leadership. Well, tonight we look at what some of these former Scientologists say happened to them when they began to speak out. Jeff Hawkins had been a Scientologist for 35 years. A member of the elite management branch of the church, the Sea Organization, Hawkins says he witnessed several incidents of violence perpetrated by church leader David Miscavige and says he was also attacked by Miscavige. One time he punched me in the gut, just with no warning, as, as he was passing me. The church says Hawkins is lying and is out to destroy the religion. He supports a group called Anonymous, which promotes an anti-Scientology movement. Hawkins concedes he never filed any criminal charges. Why not call the police? I mean, these are, this is an assault. It would never have occurred to me. It would never have occurred to you to no, call the police? No, in fact, if the police had shown up and said, we heard that he beat you up, I would have said no. No, no, uh, I just fell down the stairs or something. It's like the battered wife. You know, the police show up and say, why are you all bruised? And she said, well, I just fell down the stairs. She defends the husband. And, and so people, people who believe in the religion, people who, who have dedicated their lives to it and want to stay in it, put up with it. They, they're not going to say anything. They're not going to say anything. Though he says he had a lot of trying times in the church, Hawkins says leaving Scientology in 2005 was a very difficult decision. It is very hard to leave, and that's why people don't, and why they tend to toe the line, because here I was, 58 years old when I left. I had no money. I had no job. I didn't know anybody outside of Scientology. I had no friends. And you left your wife? And I had to leave my wife. We, In fact, uh, we never even discussed it. She was presented with divorce papers. She signed them. I was presented with them. I signed them. And we haven't spoken since. That, I mean, that's extraordinary. Yeah. Hawkins says he was declared a suppressive person, a church term for an enemy of Scientology or its principles. He says the church has a policy called disconnection, which pressures church members to cut off all ties with anyone declared suppressive. The church denies that families are separated like this, that, that people are told not to call other other people who have left the church. They're always separated. If you have a family member who is who has been declared suppressive or who has been critical of the church, you cannot contact them if you're a Scientologist. If your son, daughter, father, mother uh, has left the church and is critical or anything like that, you cannot talk to them, period. He says that when he was declared a suppressive person, that was the last time you were allowed communication. That with is a other. lie. That is an absolute, utter, total lie. Catherine Fraser was Jeff Hawkins' wife. She continues to hold a senior role in the Sea Organization. He paid for the divorce. He knew exactly what was happening. This is astonishing. He is a liar to the core. That is so not what happened. Catherine Bernardini says she was never told to disconnect from her ex-husband, Mike Rinder, the church's former spokesman who left in 2007. You're saying there is no policy of disconnection? No. Well, absolutely I did not at all disconnect from him. He was never told that. I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to drop everything I've had for my entire life and what I believe in and what Mike believed in. But Amy Scobie, another former Sea Organization member who once helped run the church's celebrity center in Los Angeles, says her mother was told to disconnect from her when she left. In fact, I was at her house when Scientologists came with the issue, my suppressive person issue, to tell her that she could no longer see me. I was in the back room. They didn't know I was there. And they showed her the issue, saying how I violated command channels and had sex out of wedlock and all this stuff. And, you know, um, and that until I got back in good standing with the church, which I had no intention of doing, she could not be in communication with me. So she told me and uh, that she didn't have a choice. It was the worst day of my life. 
We asked church spokesman Tommy Davis and church attorney Monique Yingling about disconnection, and they denied the church forces any Scientologist to break off communication with a family member or friend. They do say, however, that no Scientologist would want to talk to a so-called suppressive person. You don't want to talk to someone who's attacking your religion. That's your personal choice. I mean, if Tommy were my brother and I were a Scientologist, and uh, he starts attacking the, the church nonstop, I might get to a point where I'd want to say, look, I don't want to talk to you anymore if all you're going to do is attack my religion. And that has happened in these situations. But it isn't the church saying you can't talk to this person, but individuals make decisions that they don't want to uh, have contact with someone who is attacking what is their life, essentially. Who a Scientologist chooses to be in communication with or not? is the choice of that individual Scientologist, whether they're a member of the Sea Organization, whether they're a par parishioner or otherwise. It is absolutely and completely their choice. Tommy Davis has said this before. Here's an interview last year with CNN. Anything that's characterized as disconnection or this kind of thing, it, it's just it's just not true. There, there isn't any such policy that in the church that that's dictating who people should or should not be in communication with. You know, it's it, it just doesn't happen. That denial and other disagreements with the church prompted Oscar-winning director Paul Haggis, a Scientologist for 35 years, to resign. In a letter to Tommy Davis, he mentioned the CNN interview. You said straight out there was no such policy, that it did not exist, he wrote. I was shocked. We all know this policy exists. You might recall that my wife was ordered to disconnect from her parents because of something absolutely trivial they supposedly did 25 years ago when they resigned from the church. To see you lie so easily, he wrote, I'm afraid I had to ask myself, what else are you lying about? Christy Colbrun, another former senior Scientology member, says she was declared a suppressive person after leaving the church four years ago. She still believes in Scientology, but says her parents, who remain in the church, refuse to have any contact with her. Now, Tommy Davis, who's now the chief spokesman for, for the church, has said to us that there is no policy of disconnection. Well, he, he's kind of put a little bit of a twist on it because the truth of the matter is, um, it, it, it is your own choice to disconnect. You don't have to. You can say, no, I'm not going to disconnect. But then what happens to you is that you can't go into the church and other people won't speak to you. So there's ways of enforcing this. It's kind of a manipulative way. Yeah, you don't have to. My parents could have said, we're not disconnecting from, from our daughter. And then, you know, they would have had the repercussions of it from the rest of the Scientologists. And they want to have something to do with this organization, that their spiritual salvation is at risk. And they don't want to lose that. They don't want to lose maybe their jobs if they're working for a Scientologist. So they decide, well, I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to follow, you know, the, the orders and the commands and the things I'm being told to do so that I can not have my life messed up. Despite being labeled liars and being cut off from family members and friends, Christy and many other former Scientologists who have now come forward to tell their stories say they do not want to destroy the church. Their problem, they say, is with the man who runs it, David Miscavige. Over the course of several months, we have repeatedly asked the church for an interview with Mr. Miscavige, but he has declined. Well, over the last few days, we've heard the allegations and counter-allegations of violent incidents among the current and former senior leadership of the church. Now, without physical evidence, it's impossible to prove who's telling the truth. But the seriousness and similarity of those allegations also make their stories impossible to ignore. The public's entitled to ask why has there been no proper police inquiry into what happened inside the Church of Scientology. Once again, we'd like to point out that we've invited leader of Scientology, David Miscavige, to appear on this program to talk about the accusations from the former Scientologist, but through his spokesman, he's declined. That offer, of course, still stands. Tomorrow, 363 former members of the Church respond to accusations from their ex-wives who remain in senior leadership positions in the Church. Let us know what you think about it. Join the live chat at ac360.com.